Consider these three things. What time of the day are you looking for this object? At what angle are you positioning your telescope? And in what part of the world are you located? A telescope only works if you know exactly the mark that you want to view. You can't just see it from anywhere. For example, every time there is an eclipse of the moon or the sun, do you always see it? Of course not. It really depends on where you are and the angle of the earth at the time that the eclipse occurs. So think about this the next time you declare that this planet is false because I cannot find it. So now let's look at the latest images and video presentation, presentations which were recently provided which continue to show that something ominous is approaching us, is now getting larger and more visible as it draws closer. It's getting more difficult to determine exactly what is happening as this nemesis system draws near, as this image from California on October 20th is indicating. But if I were to venture a guess, I would say that Nibiru is getting very close to rising above the ecliptic and positioning itself uh, within the inner solar system, not far from Jupiter. But that may be an overestimate of where it would actually be located. But I'm sure that NASA would be obliged to provide the exact location of this enormous body. These Skycam videos, I have to say, are so revealing. I can't tell you how important this capture is, except for the fact it is explicitly detailing the formation of two suns rising side by side from Belgium on October 25th. Now I have personally observed a great deal of footage from the All Sky Cam Observatory cameras over these past months, and, but I have never observed anything quite like this. It's really mind-boggling. As you can see, our sun, along with a smaller sun, aka Nemesis, appear just above the horizon. If you notice the light source, you will also see that the sun to the left is more yellow in appearance, while the one to the right is more white, which would surely indicate two very separate entities. This next one is another incredible observation during sunset captured on video. It is self-explanatory, so listen to the explanation from an observer while videotaping this capture. Right there. That's as close as I can get. And now let's go see let's go see Venus again. Venus is right here. There's Venus. It'll come down. It's above this pole right here, right there. I'm going to try to focus on it a little bit better. There we go. Okay, I got my focus now. I'm going to zoom out. And then Venus again. Right over here. Right there. Right there. Boom, coming over. Can you use the car for stability? 
can come in. Right there. There. Okay. So, I would say that this is our heavenly body. The other one could be a weather balloon that they're throwing up to try to. Because this doesn't get. The other one doesn't have the brightness either now. This, that other one is definitely moving in a steady steady uh, mode like you would expect and on the ecliptic plane it's going down all right i'm going to try to adjust the brightness for this there it is there that's better that's better okay Moving down on the uh, diagonal. All right, I don't really see it now. Okay, that seems to be about it. So as you heard in this video, the observer is convinced that he has captured the presence of a heavenly body. Whatever this may be, it is very bright and it is very big and it appears to be getting closer. Here is another image taken on October 15th of what the photographer claims to be Nibiru, shown here just below and in back of the sun. It also appears to be a bit smaller in circumference to our sun. Here is a sunrise capture from October 17th showing a similar orb to the right of the sun, reflecting in the water. This image is showing the wing globe Blue Kachina from the International Space Station on October 24th. The object to the immediate left of the ISS has been seen in previous captures on their webcam. However, the latest image indicates that the system is getting larger, thus getting closer to Earth. Here is the video capture of this object. This is a really good one here. This capture from October 19th is actually showing a shadow rotation capture of Nibiru. If you look at these images in sequence, you will notice that the planet is rotating in each frame before finally disappearing. So watch carefully here. Here's another great capture on October 16th of the Nemesis Sun viewable behind the clouds. The image was captured uh, near New York City. And this one captured on October 22nd from behind the clouds. This video capture from Israel was published on September 16th and is showing the second sun. You will notice that the smaller sun remains stationary 
in which its light source is much dimmer than our own sun, thus showing a red or a brown dwarf star, a companion to our own sun. The media is now taking notice to these strange objects in the sky. On October 16th, a Norwegian newspaper published this article and these images, showing a strange orb-like planet to the left of the sun. What we are seeing in 2016 defies any logical explanation. UFO or planet, the camera capture sets the stage for what is coming our way. With each passing day, the world is waking up to the reality that our world is changing in ways we never would have imagined taking place in our lifetime. Have you heard of the saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same? It's an old proverb that can be interpreted in many different ways. But what its meaning is truly meant to convey is that turbulent changes do not affect reality on a deeper level other than to cement the status quo. This is what I believe. What has happened in our planet's history will repeat itself at some future date. What is taking place to our planet has happened in the past, and this cycle will repeat itself many times over. It's a cleansing of the physical and spiritual world in which we dwell. It is the natural order of all things in life. The only thing that is consistent is that nothing is permanent. So when you comment asking for a date for these great changes to take place, I can only tell you that I do not know, and neither does anyone else. But what I can tell you is that changes are happening here and now. If it is a divine intervention, then it will happen and we will be powerless to stop it. What we can do is hope and pray for the best outcome. NASA says, cautious, Nibiru may cause Earth's pole to shift, plus more. NASA have announced that the Earth may be about to experience a pole shift, leaving it unable to defend itself against solar radiation for up to 200 years, which would have devastating consequences for humans. Solar storms when radiation and x-rays are ejected from the sun towards Earth. The U.S. Space Agency says that if magnetic poles reverse, there would be huge increase in skin cancer, worldwide electronic communications blackouts, and extreme weather capable of wiping out humans. Climate researchers believe we are heading towards a reversal of the Earth's magnetic field an event that has happened before and has been attributed to wiping out the Neanderthal men. Bruce Tchaikovsky, Maven Principal Investigator at the University of Colorado in Boulder, said when the switch does take place, the Earth's magnetic field, which prevents the sun's dangerous radiation getting through, would be neutralized for almost 200 years. He explained that the detail during a historic announcement about how Mars lost 99% of its atmosphere and its oceans that could have housed early life. Joukowsky explains that Mars had been blasted by solar winds, which stripped it of its atmosphere for billions of years since the beginnings of our solar systems. He says when the polar shift happens, the Earth will have no magnetic field for about 200 years 
During that time, the sun's solar blasts are expected to strip away at our atmosphere just as they did on Mars billions of years ago. Thankfully, he added also that 200 years would not be long enough for the sun to significantly reduce the atmosphere for life to die out on Earth. Michael Meyer, lead scientist for the NASA Mars mission, also added that the sun had been much more powerful in the early stages of the solar system when Mars had been continuously blasted. And even when the process had taken billions of years, and still 1% of its atmosphere remains. However, scientists also admit that 200 years without a magnetic shield to defend Earth against sun solar storms, which cause the amazing northern lights on Earth as the rays hit the magnetic shield, would have implications for the human race. The magnetic shield is our first line of defense against harmful UV rays, and any thinning of our Earth's atmosphere could increase the risk of skin cancer. Without this magnetic field, or with a significantly reduced one, it could destroy global communications facilities, power supplies, and even lead to fires and rioting on the streets, according to some researchers. There are even doom mongers that have predicted that a swap of the magnetic poles from north to south would shift the continent so fiercely it would trigger mass earthquakes, rapid climate change, extinctions, and global destruction. Geologists have said that the shift event has happened a number of times in Earth's history, with the last one 780,000 years ago during the Stone Age. Alan Thompson, head of geomagnetism in the British Geological Survey, said, during previous flips, no worldwide shifting of continents or other planet-wide disasters occurred, as geoscientists can testify to from fossil and other records. Earthquakes aside, there is a specific a scientific belief that as we head towards a reversal, which could be less than a thousand years away, Earth's magnetic field will dangerously weaken, leaving us at the mercy of solar storms, when radiation and x-rays are ejected from the sun towards our planet. I'll leave links below for you for this.